The Hyde, the Hyde, actually, I built it. You built it? But it wasn't built with a view of red squirrels. Okay. Because when I came here, if I saw one red squirrel a year in this area, I was doing well. Mm -hmm. It was actually built, there's a wet flush in here, was, you could see it better before all these nettles come up. And we used to get, in the winter, woodcock. Okay. And I thought it would be nice if I could get a shot of woodcock, so yeah. I finished the hide was put here. Because you like watching them? or well, Because I wanted to photograph okay. of the woodcock, because it's fairly yeah. uh, elusive, you know, that sort of I just put here and one day I'm sitting in there and I hear putter 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 on the roof and a wee red squirrel looked in the door and that was it. So I started to give them some breakfast in my way and uh, I've seen as many as ten here one time. Okay. Um, so I used the woodcock. I have seen one, <laughs> and the camera was at home that day. <laughs> so you, you can't win them all. But uh, no, the, the, the red squirrels have been... Uh, it's been a success because um, the wood that we walked through to get here, I thinned it a few years ago, um, particularly, well, mostly large, but there was a wee bit of pine I thinned as well. And never has there been so much thought going into a thinning of wood <laughs> for red squirrels. <laughs> and there's quite a lot of drays up there now. Yeah. It has been a success. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else have you seen here? Pine martens? Not here. No? Okay. Not here, um, but not very far away. Uh, what's the most unusual thing you've heard here? We've got all sorts of winter and bird bramblings and that, but mm. um, again, no million miles from here I've seen Ota. Mm -hmm. um, in here, of course, my other passion in life is no deer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have managed to get a squirrel, <laughs> managed to get over the years some nice pictures of a, a, a row. Mm -hmm. But you, you just you, you never know. <coughs> I'm not one of these people that yeah. are always looking for the rarities. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of pleasure for just the common everyday stuff mm -hmm. and seeing it close hand and watching how it yeah. they react and all this kind of thing. What's, the, what's the funniest thing you've, you've seen? The funniest thing I think was sitting in there one day <coughs> and I felt something on my feet and I looked down and there was a red squirrel in my <laughs> He'd come in the window when I wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> so open the door and let him out. There's been a there's been a few. There's one sitting up there, can you see that? Ah, ah, they're, they're, they're coming for their breakfast. He's waiting for us to leave. Yeah, that's just what he's waiting for. But uh, one of the Problems we've had this year, of course, is I think everybody's having it. Grey squirrels. Mm. Um, damage on the feeder there. That's grey squirrel damage. Yeah. The, they're a menace, and uh, you know the, the local guy that has the the shooting interest here because there is pheasants, obviously. He bless him, does what he can, mm -hmm. but he's limited in the time he can spend on it, and it's it's. Uh, it's a difficult thing. Yeah. Uh, this year has been, <coughs> has been pretty bad. Yeah, so we've seen an increase in both red and grey squirrels yes. right across Tayside and across Scotland uh, this year and it's considered to be because of the, the large uh, seed crop of last autumn yeah. followed by a very mild winter. Mm -hmm. um, it was obviously extremely frustrating not being able to do as much trapping uh, as we normally would have this year because of Covid, um, but I wouldn't say that the explosion in grey squirrels has anything to do with that. It's, it's about the seed crop and the mild winter from last year. Um, and obviously here in Tayside, um, you know, we're very much the interface for, for grey squirrels moving north, so we do have red and grey squirrels right across Tayside. Um, and you know one of the, the sort of key things that I do as part of my job is to coordinate grey squirrel control so that includes um, estates that are on forest grant scheme for grey squirrel control, volunteers um, and also the, the professional grey squirrel officers that, that work with us um, but yeah they all have a very difficult job on their hands this year. 
definitely doing it. Yeah. But funnily enough, <coughs> just I was I bumped into a lad just this week uh, in, a, in a bit of woodland. I was walking my old dog and uh, come on, this boy filling a squirrel feeder and I said that wasn't there last night and he said no I've just put it up and it's 24 hours later and it's empty. Now this was a scrappy piece of what conservationists hate, Sitka spruce. Mm. And I, I talked to him last night and he'd been there an hour and he'd seen five different squirrels mm -hmm. in a scrappy bit of Sitka spruce. So they are about. So, I mean, red squirrels quite like Sidka. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know when things are very bad, when grey squirrels move into lesser habitat that's for right. them. That's right. Um, but, yeah, just I guess just on the, the subject of supplementary feeding, it is really important that it always remains just supplementary. Yeah. Um, and because um, of the, the potential threat of, of um, the squirrel pox virus being brought in by grey squirrels, it's really important to, um, to clean feeders um, and disinfect them um, where you've got both species. But I see these two feeders here. There's actually a squirrel in the feeder. <laughs> Um, these two feeders here, am I right in thinking they are red squirrel only? Are the squares such that uh, an adult yes, grey anyway wouldn't get in? The problem is that we've been getting younger yes. greys. Yes, exactly. So it doesn't it doesn't fit for that. Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. These guys they get they get a, a, a wee they get their breakfast in the morning and then they're left to it. Yeah. If you go up into the wood there, you'll yeah. find all the nuts. Exactly. The, the, so there's this is a what lot I, of coning going on. This is what I say to people. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of people don't realise that the, really the best time of year to put food out for squirrels would be May, June. That's right. Because, you know, all the stuff they've squirreled away yeah. is running out by that point. That's right. um, and a lot of people don't realise that because they kind of assume it's just the same as the birds and that they need it sort of January, February, March mm. in the colder months. So a lot of people ask about supplementary feeding and, uh, you know, I guess our, our concern is that if, if you put out so much food and the squirrels, you know, say young squirrels only came to the feeders and you were only That's putting right. out peanuts, that they would have deficiencies, you know, they would suffer from deficiencies. But I can't really imagine any squirrel that's only ever going to eat one thing. Um, yeah. But I would say to people, um, don't spend loads and loads and loads of money on the food because they will just bury it. You know, so although the feeder will empty potentially after one day, if you keep feeding it, they'll they'll empty yeah, it as quick they, as you they could fill it. So um, yeah, it's it's really important that it is just as a as a supplementary uh, uh, thing to their diet. Um, another quite um, nice thing to put out for them, I don't know if you've got it here Charlie, has she ever put out a bit of deer antler? Aye, uh, there was, there is a bit somewhere in the <laughs> metal, so. it, it was hanging on the tree, but we took it off the tree and there, there were no one away on okay. the ground, so I just left them. Yeah, yeah, we've actually had quite a few photos come in recently of from people photographing squirrels and, and actually yeah. gnawing the deer antler, which is yeah, quite I've, I've nice a, to see. A tame, tame deer stalker friend who slips me a bit of antler every yeah. time I ask him. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess as well in winter, you know, like a lot of other wildlife, it's really um, important to put out water when if, uh, if it's a really cold That's winter. Well. We're, we're um, running right here because just through there there's, there's there's water mm, yeah, okay. in abundance. Yeah, yeah. But I have another wee spot and a piece of Norway spruce and I do have water there. Yeah. And I uh, yes they, they they do drink it. Yeah they do. And they yeah. certainly do. <laughs> So I've been with the project, as you know, uh, for just over three years, but you've uh, had a much longer involvement. Um, mm -hmm. How did you first become involved with Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels and when was that? You know, I actually can't remember. <laughs> it was by accident, I think. I honestly can't remember. It was Ken Neal in those days. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember if Ken contacted me because he was looking for a source of wood. Okay. to build feeders. I think that might have been it, but I honestly can't remember. It's not long mm -hmm. ago. <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, I've continued yes. in your time to yeah. supply these things. Yeah. Uh, and I'm happy to do so. Mm -hmm. Because it's, you know, with the wee sawmill I have, you've always got bits of offcuts. Yeah. 
Well, normally they would go in the fire, but mm -hmm. and it's fine to just yep, put them absolutely. into that and know they're going to. Yeah. It's it's my way of putting a wee yeah. bit back into yep. the thing, like right? because absolutely. I think that we are trying to do a wee bit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because it's you, you know it's not just red squirrels, it's and boy that it's everything. Yeah. 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 That's it. My, my other passion in life, believe it or not, is butterflies. Okay. <laughs> but I spend a lot of time photographing butterflies throughout the summer and, it, and they're, they're struggling a bit too. Yeah. Everything's yeah. struggling. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, it's fine, you know, you can't fix the world, but if you can fix, do something to help mm -hmm. in your own wee bit of ground, yeah. I think that's... You're good at reporting squirrel sightings as well. Aye, ah, right. <laughs> Especially crumbling about grey ones. <laughs> Well, we need to hear about it all. It's all, it's all useful um, stuff. <laughs> and I think, um, well, yeah, I think you might. Did you donate some photos to the project? Because th I'm sure we have some postcards. I, think I, I used to. Uh, anything I thought would be of interest, and I used to send them to, to Ken Neil. Mm -hmm. and I think he used some of them in his talks and that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I am. Mean, I've used one as well. That one's oh, very good. You were there. <laughs> I, I, and, I didn't, and I didn't ask you any awkward questions. You didn't, thank no, you for I that. was on my best behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of these guys that, and, and I would advise anybody to do it, get a, a piece of land, a bit of woodland, whatever, and really get to know it. And you will be amazed what turns up. I mean, uh, this particular bit here, I've been lucky enough to walk this daily for the last 12, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you see people who oh, there's nothing to see. <laughs> there's always something mm -hmm. to see. There's yeah, there always is. something to see. Always something to find. Being a keen photographer, of course, helps because you're, you're going from macro insects to squirrels, the deer, the whatever. Yeah. Bird photography I don't do so much of. I'm a mere mammal man really. But um, photographing voles in the wilds quite quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge, but never mind. I was trying to think um, on my way here today, uh, you know, where where are other good spots to see red squirrels across Tayside. Um, and off the top of my head I can think of Lag and Wood in Comrie. Uh, Loch and Lowe's yeah. Visitor Centre is uh, pretty much uh, guaranteed. And then Taymount Wood, uh, not yeah. far from Stanley. Can you think of any um, good places to see them in Angus? Well, there are bits in Montreal. Mm. Or as we call it, Montremont Forest. Montremont Forest. Uh, yeah. there, there are bits in there, yeah. areas in there that you see. Um, I'm not quite sure. There used to be squirrels seen quite often at Mulgay's Lock, which is SWT mm. Reserve. Mm -hmm. And the squirrels there. And from the east, I'm not sure. I mean, I talked to various farmers, and uh, they've got, you know, we've seen a squirrel in there, but in fact, there's a farmer across the valley there. He's, he would love to have squirrels. Mm -hmm. The problem is there is no natural corridor yeah. to get them to. Absolutely. This yeah. is the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's a difficult one because when looking at trying to uh, encourage corridors to help wildlife, uh, you know, it's generally a good thing, but we would also be helping grey squirrels as well. This so is it, the is thing. A, it is a tricky balance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did hear um, an interesting one the other day that uh, red squirrels have been seen at uh, the Botanical Gardens in Dundee for the first time in quite a few years. We don't get many sightings of red squirrels in Dundee um, now, but uh, I'm not sure if that's because of a lack of red squirrels or because people just aren't reporting. It could be either or both. Um, so yeah, there's certainly red squirrels right across Tayside. I mean, I can remember uh, a wee lady sitting by the side of the river in an old brooch and old alder tree watching the salmon spawning at the feet. And mm -hmm. It was all these kind of things that got me yeah. kind of interested. You know? yeah, it, uh, but for me, the squirrels now, they do no harm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more you 
people kind of study them and the, the more you learn about them, mm -hmm. the more you realise just how vulnerable they actually are. Yeah. There's yeah. just the evidence stacked against them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't have it easy, that's for sure. I know we've, we've only seen a few squirrels this morning and we've not really got to really look at them, but I didn't notice any of them molting, but this is absolutely the time of year for that. And in actual fact, what happens is I get I get people sending me pictures, going, oh, there's something wrong with the squirrels, That's they've sick. got this deadly disease. <laughs> um, and yeah, so it's, yeah, at this time of year, so spring and autumn is, is uh, when they when they molt and it can look quite mm -hmm. unsightly. Definitely look a bit patchy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, early on, when I started you know, watching them, um, I used to try and recognise them with the tails, mm. but I quickly found out the, the yeah, tails change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you can't do that. No, no. It just doesn't work. No. Um, nevertheless, it's fine to see them. But this kind of wee set up I have here, it's more about me being able to keep a close eye on them just to monitor their mm -hmm. kind of health and general condition. Yeah. Um, and as you see, we get them pretty close. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you get them in there. <laughs> oh, another shot. Oh, they're working away quite quietly here. Just when you hear them on the roof of the hide, when you're sitting in the hide. <laughs> So we've actually got our Great Scottish Squirrel Survey coming up, which runs from the 21st to the 27th. And we've chosen to do it across those dates because that's when Red Squirrel Week is. Red Squirrel Week is a week that is recognised across the UK and we try and raise awareness about the plight of the red squirrel. And although we, we ask people to report their red and grey squirrel sightings right throughout the year, we kind of particularly ask people to do it during the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey to try and help um, fill in any gaps that we might have in our, in our knowledge of um, the presence and absence of red and grey squirrels. And it's very easy to do, you just log it on the website, as you know. Mm -hmm. So each location where you see one of the two species should be recorded uh, individually. It's not possible to record both species on no. the same record form. Um, so, uh, so yeah, if, no matter where you are, even if you're not here, no yeah, matter where I mean, you are I mean, in, in have, Scotland, you can let us know what yeah, you see during yeah, that I week. I have done some in some fairly obscure places. Yes. <laughs> uh, up, the, 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 the one bit I always forget, and, and it gives you a reminder at the end, you haven't done it properly, is I always forget to put in, was it alive or dead? <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, the way the thing's set up, it reminds you. It doesn't you. let you get any yes. further until you do that. Bit. Exactly. <laughs> I, I always seem to miss out. I don't seem to notice the, the habitat bit. So it'll get to the end and it'll remind me That's what it. tree species was it. But um, yeah, it's important. Uh, the information is really important for the project so that we can see if there's any change um, in, in the presence of absence of either species. But particularly the, the grey squirrel sightings are, are important to us. Mm. That we actually uh, work on the back of them. The problem is when the grey squirrel moves in, after a time the red squirrels will uh, move out um, and you know set up territories elsewhere. Although there is the competition for resource, um, you know, so competition for food and shelter, um, there's the added level of the potential threat of squirrel pox virus. Um, we know that uh, the furthest, most northerly grey squirrels carrying squirrel pox virus are halfway between um, Stirling and Falkirk. Uh -huh. um, and to my knowledge, uh, the furthest, most northerly population of red squirrels, uh, where, sorry, where there's been an outbreak in red squirrels, is Peebles in the borders. Uh -huh. um, I actually worked on a red squirrel project back in 2006 and 7. I was in Dumfries and Galloway um, and unfortunately was there when we found the first uh, red squirrel with pox and that was 2007. Um, and so, you know, in the time between then and now, 13 years, uh, things have progressed. Um, and so it's really important for people to remain vigilant, to clean feeders, to try and just do what they can. As you said earlier, everybody can do their bit, whether right. it's report a squirrel, clean feeders, uh, you know, 
donate some time to the project or, or you know, if you're really if you are able and have the time, you know, trapping trapping yeah. grey squirrels is, is really I important. Mean, um, so I first met you, Charlie, uh, early in 2018 uh, when I came to, to ask about, uh, you know, if you were still able to supply the timber for the, the feeder boxes. Um, and we had a great chat that day and you told me about uh, the height and how close you get to the squirrels, uh, but I hadn't really anticipated that it would be that close. <laughs> um, and. Uh, I've, I've always meant to come back to you and ask you if I could uh, join you up here at the Heights one day. So it's taken me two years, um, but thank you very much uh, yeah, for sharing well. this with us um, and for arranging for the, the Red Squirrels to be here. Well, I, I, I asked them to be here, yeah, be in their best behaviour. Um, they're not too bad. So yeah, it's always it's uh, it's always a, a tricky one. We just it's wildlife. You never know whether it's going to show or not. So yeah, uh, we've been very lucky today to see them. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that with us, and I look forward to seeing what you report during the all Great right. Scottish Squirrel right. Survey. Right. Yeah, 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 more typing to do. Yes, more typing. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we'll do our best. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>